I'm so glad we can bring our needs to the Lord and know that he cares for us. <sighs> what a wonderful thing. I'm not going to talk long today. Um, I promise. <laughs> I said that once in Benton Harbor, Michigan, and the guy behind me said, oh, don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. <laughs> There's a, there was a minister's meeting, and, and uh, the, the guys were all supposed to speak 20 minutes. And the guy goes, like, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour. One of the guys in the front takes a song book, book and heaves it at the guy. He ducks, it misses him, it hits a guy who's sitting over in the choir. Hits him in the head, they're, they're, trying, to, like, like they're trying to revive him. As the guy's going down, wait, wait, hit me again, I can still hear him. <laughs> oh, old long-winded preacher joke. <laughs> so I was thinking on my way back from Sweden, I was thinking about uh, why are we here? What's the big picture of what we're doing here on this planet? Do you guys ever wonder that? Do you ever wonder sometimes, like, what am I really doing? You know, am I uh, just kind of treading water? Am I just kind of just doing my work and... And just going home or, you know, or in my case, you know, doing, you know, this music, is it really doing anything is, I don't know, sometimes I get into a place of, of wondering about uh, what it, what it's all about. And, 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 and really for me, a lot of that is about, at the core of it is wondering if I'm in the will of God or if I am somehow finding myself um, outside of God's will, and um, and sometimes that can be a difficult thing to to discern, um, because <laughs> as we know, and we know from many stories uh, of in the Bible that you know God doesn't isn't always there just telling you every step of the way what to be what to be doing, and you know it's like oh you know, do this now, do that now, you know, I, we're not, we don't all just hear from God like every day, you know, and so there's a lot of, we got to have a lot of faith, don't we? Uh, and faith not just in God, but faith in ourselves. And that is really challenging sometimes. Uh, what I, and I'm, what I mean by not, not faith in ourselves like, like, oh, we're so great or something, but faith that we really are following God to the best of our ability. A lot of us believe in God, and we believe uh, he is, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and all of those good things. But uh, I've found in my conversations with people where their doubts are is a lot of times in themselves, whether they're really, whether, you know, you ever have the enemy start accusing you in your own heart about whether you are you or whether you're really a Christian or not? I have. <laughs> I went to my pastor about that one time because I was I was fasting and praying and it wasn't getting any better. And he just laughed and said, "Oh well, yes, the sons of God went up to meet God, and Satan came also." <laughs> I was like, "That's it." <laughs> But we do get deliverance. In time, I was delivered from that in that phase and what I was going through. And I know the, that we've been delivered from many things, and yet we shall be delivered. I know we heard about that last week, right? About I'm being saved. I've been saved. I'm being saved, and yet I shall be saved, which I love that. There's so much hope, so much hope in that. Uh, yeah, so most of us don't think about the big picture too often. Um, you know, what's the point kind of kind of things. Um, and I started thinking, as I was on the plane, I started thinking about it in terms of the, this, uh, this diagram of, oh, can I do this? Of uh, what it means to be human that I uh, became quite obsessed with uh, a while ago. A little askew, but can you see it? Is that better? Uh, 
that's pretty bad, but you can, you can get the idea. And I started thinking about it in terms of, uh, of this uh, and, and how, how we, we decide kind of the course of our lives many times are, are really decided down in the lower areas. Really, you know, if we're honest, um, a lot of times we find ourselves having physical ability in a certain area. Maybe we're good at a certain thing. You know, our brains click with a certain thing, and so we decide, oh, I'm going to be this thing. I'm going to be an accountant. I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to be an athlete. In my case, uh, you know, I, I saw the Beatles on television and said, oh, I, I think I want to do that, you know. But I don't think it was very spiritual. That's, that's all I'm saying. I mean, it's not... That none of this is bad, by the way. This isn't bad. But it's just... It's not this. I think if we draw distinctions between these things, it can, it can empower us. So, so we find... We think about the big picture and what our lives are supposed to become. And, but many times, I think it's still based in these... Uh, physical senses and the physical desires and 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 things that are not necessarily of God. Now God can use those things, and He does. We know, of course, you know that He redeems our brokenness. He He redeems the things that we got involved in, maybe for, to feed our ego, or or just because. I don't know, maybe we didn't think about it at all. We thought, oh, I guess I'll just do this because uh, it just seems like it makes sense. I just sort of fell into this business because it just, I don't know, just didn't, it just seemed like it was the next thing that I should do, you know. And we'll find ourselves in these positions, but God can take those things and turn them into miracles, right? And, we, and we'll look back and go like, wow. God even took that stuff like when I was just didn't know what I was doing at all and I was just stumbling around. And of course I feel that way in my personal life, you know, I feel like that's what he did with my music uh was that he's taken it and and redeemed it. But we have great ability in and of ourselves, you know, so I was also thinking about you know how we designed our lives from here. we many times we design our lives from here from you know from what our gifts are and and then we wind up wondering kind of we can some sometimes wind up wondering what's the point we're not really getting what we wanted to get from these things that we are endeavoring in and many times we think we're going to get this stuff up here like um if I, you know, when I get this promotion or when I graduate, then life's going to be really great and I'm going to have peace and I'm going to have joy and I'm going to have fulfillment and all of this when I get successful in the thing that I'm working on. And I can't, also will think, oh, and I can't have this while this other stuff is not fulfilled yet. Right? Like I... I, I just I just can't be at peace until I accomplish this thing. I don't know what it would be for you. You know, it might be, and you know, I, until I resolve this issue in my family, I just can't have peace. I just can't, I can't access these things. But really, this is only available in the Lord, as we've talked about before. One of the great problems with mankind, and I see it everywhere, I see it on the news, I see it everywhere, is that we're, we're striving to have this, but this, this doesn't exist in man. Only, the, only, this, only the, this stuff down here exists in the realm of man. This only will come, this only comes from God. And the great news and the reason why we're here today celebrating is that God, God is with us as we were singing about. That God is here. He's, I love that song. He's come 
to bring to be love to bring peace he brings eternal life he brings all these things to us that we would not ever have otherwise and what it means to be human what it means to be in this place is that you're always seeking that whether you know it or not you're always something's always wrong something's always like well i mean this is good it's good but you know when i get that that's going to be really good you know it's it's good that we've got you know this kind of hotel room but really if we had that kind of hotel room or if you know it's 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 good that i have graduated but when i get that really good job then that's going to be it it's always oh if what it's always that thing out there is going to be it cuz this isn't it that's what it means to be human and another way of saying that is the flesh cannot be satisfied right so hopefully we come to that place where we realize that we're what we're truly desiring is not really available in the physical realm so hopefully most of us have already come to that place but if you haven't that's okay you'll have your time <laughs> you know sometimes it takes time god has to reveal these things over time i think i had to die i had to come to that place through a lot of pain to realize i can't really make it i i i can't make a beautiful life filled with this on my own i have completely failed and so if you come to that place that's good <laughs> cuz that's the place you must come to you must realize that there's no hope in yourself that's the only kind of heart that god can really build in why would you sell out why all these things that we talk about you know giving over completely i surrender all if you think you can if there's something still in you that thinks you can pull it off go for it because you have to know for yourself how much you need him it's a beautiful thing to come to a place of full surrender so then hopefully we encounter jesus who says i am the truth and the life give your life to me come and follow me and i'll make your life beautiful right so now we have jesus but now what we now we have jesus so now jesus one of his primary things that he does is he brings the holy spirit so now hopefully we're born of the spirit and now we have this fourth element that has become part of who we are but all this other stuff is still there bickering and arguing saying i don't want to right as paul says i find that my warring in my flesh right part of us wants to one part of us would like yes 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 you know we're turning our will over either this way or that way all the time either we're turning our will over to our physical desires and our senses or we're turning our will over to the holy spirit there's no other option there's only two options <laughs> right death and life <laughs> yeah hallelujah okay i mean, i get excited about it because without this all i all we're ever doing as human beings is just kind of hitting the ceiling scra scratching the surface getting glimpses i got a glimpse but it's never like it doesn't retain it doesn't live in you it doesn't it doesn't continue to instruct and feed and give strength and 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 make you and he wants to create in you create in me a clean heart 
Oh, God. He wants to create in you. Yeah. Let him do it. Let him do it. That's what we're talking about. When I'm, when I'm, oh, I'm skipping to the end, but, you know, the big picture is what does he want to create in you? What does he want to make, turn you into? Huh. And we don't have any idea. I don't have any idea. And it used to be that ministers of the gospel of all ilks, um, you know, priests, rabbis, you know, whatever, what have you, well, that wouldn't be the gospel, but all spiritual leaders, they would tell you what to do. They would tell you, well, you got to live this way, you got to live that way, you got to, you got to do this, you got to do that. I'm, I'm going to draw this line between, well, what's, what's profane and what's sacred, right? What's of God and what's not of God? Well, the minister would draw that line for you, right? They would say, okay, well, this is of the flesh and this is bad, so you can't do this, and this is spiritual, so you need to do this, right? Then comes all the rules and all the stuff. Or if you're Catholic, then, you know, you have to go to confession and say Hail, Hail Marys. And if you're Jewish, then you have to, you know, whatever the rabbi, whatever your rabbi's teaching is, you have to do that on the Sabbath. And, right? So this is people trying to help people, I think, I think in a misguided way, obviously, to achieve the big picture, which is to do the will of God for your life. You are here. God has a purpose for you. And God's purpose for you is what this is all about. What we want to try to help you to find and grow into. But God's the farmer. He's the grower, right? We are, we are helpers. We will try to guide you. We... But we believe here at City on a Hill, and I've never talked about this before, I don't think, but we don't, we don't believe in that man should be telling people what to do. We should be helping people to draw nearer to the Lord and to be receiving from here wisdom and instruction and that God will show you how, what it is that you're supposed to be doing and how you can draw nearer to him. If your will is turned to him, he will grow you. He will show you. We will help you in any way that we can. But we're not, it's, it's, it's a new day, folks. <laughs> the day of, at least here, and I think in a lot of places also, the minister isn't going to tell you what God's will is for you. He's not going to tell you how you're supposed to live. And we believe, you know, aside from the things, you know, that are really spelled out in Scripture, we can talk about those things. And we do from time to time. But mainly what we want, what we're excited about, is you having a relationship with God with no one in between. You have your personal connection with God through the Spirit, and the Spirit of God is instructing you. The Spirit of God is convicting you. Who cares what I say? <laughs> Who cares what brother so-and-so says or what the priest says or what the president says? Or let, the, let God deal with you. That is our desire. That's our passion. Right? <laughs> yeah. Jesus says, one is coming and he will teach you. Let the Spirit of God teach you. So now we have Jesus. What does he say about our purpose? What does Jesus say about our purpose? John 15, 7 through 17 says, If you abide in me my, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So one, we're, one thing, can you put that up there? brother John 15 7 through 17 I, th I just thought uh, you know it was all so good let's just put in the whole words of Jesus here can't go wrong 
So one of the things that we're one of the one of the purpose, the big picture things of our lives is we are to be abiding in Him. We are to be like, that means dwelling, doing life with. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So glorifying God is another one of our great big picture purposes. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Live in his love. Why would we want to do anything else? I'll tell you why. <laughs> this doesn't want that. <laughs> why? Because this wants to be in control. We don't want to give up control. I mean, that's a big thing. Control. In Holland, on the, on the freeways, they just have these pictures of cameras with lines coming out of it. It just says in big letters, control. <laughs> <laughs> and I always think, oh, no, we don't want that. <laughs> but we don't. <laughs> That's why we have to come to the end of ourselves where we go like, okay, 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 God. Okay, okay. They say you can do something with a broken life. They say you're full of love and mercy. I guess I'll try it. I've, I've got no other alternative. At least that's where I came to. And God, in his wonderful, amazing grace, says, okay, like even, even, even in that kind of situation where you're almost really insulting him, I mean, really, if you think about who he is and who you are, that you've been resisting him for years, <laughs> trying to have your own way, trying to prove yourself, and then finally, when you fall on your face after the hundredth time, you go like, okay, I guess I'll try God. <laughs> it's terrible. But that's, that was me. That was me. And, and that, this is our God. He responds right where you are, just like that. Like with his sweet, gentle, loving spirit just wooing me in my heart and I'm just like crying like a baby and walking up to the altar you know I, it's such a mystery isn't it why why Lord why does he love and care for us so isn't it amazing he's amazing as the father has loved me so have I loved you wow how much love is that as the Father has loved me, Jesus says, so have I loved you. And, you know, uh, a little bit later, he, when he's praying, he's praying for his disciples and all those who, that will be drawn to him by their word. And guess what? That's us. So this is, this is for us. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So one of, the, one of our purposes is of life, our big picture, the purpose, what's, what's the meaning, what's the purpose of my life? One of them is to do his commandments. And, and Jesus' co commandments, as I see it, are not like the Ten Commandments. They're not like these organized things. You know, his... He, he, he wants to be whispering in our ear, moving us, turning us, steering our lives daily. I, think, I believe that's following, living in Jesus' commandments is like, go talk to that person over there. It doesn't mean like all the, a bunch of do's and don'ts and, it stuff. It, it means being his hands and feet, being his body in the earth, right? And guess what? If you try that, next time you hear the still small voice of God in some weird, sometimes it's weird. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Any witnesses? Sometimes it's weird. I mean, God, will, you'll feel some kind of instruction in an unusual place, in an unusual way, dealing with something that you like whoa really okay 
okay? But when you hear that, say yes, do it, try it out. Obey his commandments. <clears throat> Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that they just lay down their life for their friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. So love, of course, is part of our big picture calling and our purpose. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Okay, so Jesus has been given all power in heaven and earth. And he calls you friend. Just think about that. Just ponder that this week. You did not choose me, but I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love him, love one another. So one of the things that Jesus is saying is the purpose of our lives is to bear fruit. And this would be, of course, the fruit of the Spirit. Well, I, don't, I don't think we're talking about any kind of fruit that this will bear. Right? We're talking about the fruits of of the Spirit of God. This is our great calling and our big picture purpose of life. So what is it all about? And here, here's, here's the tragic thing. Like we can know that, but a lot of times what happens is like that sort of, you know, out here in the air somewhere, like what do they used to say, airy fairy or I don't know. <laughs> Like Namby Pamby, I don't know. It'd be some like, oh, that you know what I mean? Oh yeah, the Holy Spirit and the, and all that stuff. People it can take, yeah, that's nice for church, and then they get into their lives. And it's like, yeah, but my life is a, you know, you don't understand. I've got this job, and I've got to do this, and I've got all, I've got to pay all these bills, and I've got to do all this stuff, and I'm just so busy, and and many times we're so engaged in all of this stuff, and. This, and me too. We're so engaged in all of this stuff that we kill off all of the possibility of this stuff because we don't even think about it. We don't even think about like, oh, you know, I'm so angry with my coworkers, man. It's, it's like I'm just consumed about this thing and it's just irritating me so much. And, oh, yeah, okay, I'll pray for him. I'll pray for him a little bit. And then but we don't think about how we could transcend all of that and maybe deliver some of this into our world. I, there's been times for me when, you know, I'm praying every morning like, Lord, show me how to love more perfectly. Show me how to love your people. Show me how to love these people that I'm with today better. I know that I'm not, you know. Or I'll be praying for people and the Lord will deal with me like, you know, you're not really loving them. You're not really loving them. You're resentful about this, that, and the other thing. I'll go like, okay, well, show me. And, you know, one really simple thing you can do is just ask people if they need help. I've had tremendous breakthroughs in my relationships with people where there was a rub and there was a problem and instead of just being irritated with them and cutting them off, I would go to them and say, hey, I know you're struggling with this thing. How can I help you? <laughs> it's been miraculous. It really has. So let's look for how we can bring heaven to earth. How we can bring the agape love of God, his joy, his peace, his life, how we can bring that into our world, into your world, where you are every day. How's that for a purpose? Yeah. Okay.
Okay, I already went through a lot of this stuff. Yeah, so a personal relationship with God through the Spirit, with no one in between. So you need to seek out God's will for you. And I, and I really recommend that you do that. Spend some time with the Lord. Seek out his will. You know, because in Matthew seven twenty one, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So there you have it. Let's do the will of God. Your purpose, your life path, God has one for you, and it's the greatest thing ever. But you have to seek after it and discover it for yourself. And take it seriously. Really take it seriously. One thing that the Lord laid on my heart recently was, Neil, you can't have me and have everything else too. And I've just been thinking about that. And I think what he means is you can't serve two masters. You're either going to serve him or you're going to serve the world or you're going to serve yourself. You can't, you can't just have it all. We, we live in a very have it all kind of world kind of society now. There's no thought of separation from anything. And the Lord's just been dealing with me about that. And so I'm praying. I'm asking him, well, Lord, what is it you want me to lay aside? What is it that you want me to, what's getting in between my relationship with you? We want, that's really the goal. The goal is have nothing, right? A clear shot. Like you just feel like, you feel like the Lord's just right there. You ever been there? Spent some time there? It's incredible. We feel like the Lord's just right there with you, talking with you and and counseling you and leading you. And, and, and then stuff happens sometimes you don't feel as close. Well, I mean, I know some of that's natural, but I think we always ought to be seeking after that close as close as breath relationship, don't you? Yeah, we want to have that. I like that song. No, it's okay. So, yeah, what I'm asking you today, will you turn back on the cares of this life and the issues of the world and turn towards him? Give your life fully to Jesus and all those desires that you had when you were a kid. All your gifts, all your mistakes, all your faults, will you lay them down so that he can show you the Father's perfect will for your life? This is your great purpose, not whatever you thought it was. Let God reinvent you in the image of his son today. Well, I, I want to share something with you guys. Um, that um, I saw last week, and it embodies everything that Neil just said. Some of you may have seen this. I actually posted this on Facebook, but some of you may be like me, and you visit Facebook once a month, whether you have to or not. Um, but to give you a little background on this, there's about a three-minute video clip on here. The guy's name is Brant Jean, K-E-A-N. Uh, I don't know. Can we do, do we have the ability to pull YouTube up here? If we do, if not, I'll just play it on my phone real quick. Um, to give you some background, uh, this guy's brother was murdered by a police officer. Uh, it's about six months ago in Texas. Uh, and she had come home. She'd worked a double shift, I guess. Walked into the wrong apartment, thought it was her apartment. Um, there was a, a man living in his apartment. She thought he was an intruder. Um, she shot him point blank twice and killed him. Uh, and the trial just happened. Uh, and she was actually convicted and given 10 years and convicted of murder, not just manslaughter. So, I mean, it was not really much question about it. They asked, and she admitted, yes, I did shoot to kill. But what I want to play is his brother's testimony uh, at her um, trial, at the end of the trial. Uh, and it's, it's really quite amazing to me, um, this man's testimony. Um, I'll just play a little bit of it if I can. I know if you go to God and ask him, you will forgive. I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And I know if you. 
you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not going to say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't going to ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what, that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not going to say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. And it continues for a couple of minutes. Um, without this, that man couldn't have done what he did. What's even more interesting, but they don't show on the clip, is that after the courtroom cleared out, and there's actually a big controversy over this, sadly, right now, uh, it was only this lady, the police officer, and the judge and you probably couldn't see it on my little screen. But when this happened, the judge was in tears. Uh, but after everybody cleared out, the judge came down with a Bible and also counseled this woman and said it starts with the, 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 faith of a, you know, the faith of a mustard seed, and this is how it starts, and handed the woman a Bible. So, again, without this, that doesn't happen.